Let's end this chapter with a discussion of this concept called tail dependence. Let me define it first. Tail dependence basically refers to the conditional probability of an extreme move happening in one variable, let's say variable v2, given that I already know that v1 has undergone an extreme move. Okay, this is called tail dependence. If you were to take a look at two popular distributions that we use, let's say a normal distribution versus, let's say, the student's t distribution. Okay, then you will find that student's t distribution has more tail dependence as compared to the normal distribution. It means that student's t distribution, you would see that it's more common in this distribution for the two variables v1 and v2 to be, let's say, jointly experiencing ex extreme moves, okay, as compared to if these two variables were normally distributed. What is the meaning of jointly experiencing extreme moves? It means that if these two variables were students t distributed, there is a higher chance that these two variables would be, would be found together in the tail, together. It can be the right tail or it can be the left tail, okay? And this chance of them together being in the tail is higher in students t as compared to normal, right? Let's take a look at these two diagrams. Now, I invite you to actually just take a look at both of them and just form a mental conclusion as to which one is student's t and which one is normal distribution. You can even pause the video and think about it. Now, if you've given it a good enough thought, and let me quickly tell you which one is which. The left one, which is this one, is a normal distribution case. What I have plotted here is a scatter plot. So it's a plot of realizations of let's say v1 and v2. So let's let's every every dot here is one particular realization of these a pair of values of v1 and v2, right? So in this normal distribution case, you see that these values are really lumped in this central blob. There are fewer values outside this blob as compared to, let's say, the student's t scatter plot. In the student's t scatter plot, see there are many more values here and here, and these constitute the left and the right tail as compared to look at the normal distribution, very few values, right? So therefore, this is a plot of student's t distribution, the lower one. Now, where does tail dependence come and affect us, or why is tail dependence important? Now. Keep one thing in mind, the reason why we are discussing tail dependence in this chapter is this. When you see or observe periods of stress, then these are periods wherein the correlation between assets tends to go up. Okay, correlations is a, is a fact that correlations increase during periods of market stress. Why is that so? If in market stress periods, if you see all stocks are moving down together, right, that this would imply to you that they appear very highly correlated, which is to say that their correlations go up, okay? If you have to model such scenarios, and risk managers by all means do have to model such scenarios, then normal distribution would not be a good candidate because in normal distribution, if you see two stocks going down together or going up together is a rare event in normal distribution, while in a student's t distribution, it's not as rare as normal distribution, right? So therefore, if you want to model the joint distribution or joint behavior of two market variables, then the student's t copula would be a better choice as compared to the Gaussian copula. The Gaussian copula is based on the normal distribution and student's t copula is based on the student's t distribution. This is about tail dependence, okay?